Section 21.1, radioactivity. So when the nuclei of an atom okay, spontaneously emits energy, it's called radioactive. Okay? An element is radioactive if on its own it's spitting out energy, 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 energy. And it's going to do this in some ways. Sometimes when it spits out energy, it's actually losing mass. So um, you're, you're spitting out um, other matter, okay? So it's actually breaking apart. It's like a Jenga tower where parts are falling off of it. And as it's falling off, energy is being emitted. You can do it that way. You can just kind of shift it around where you're, read, um, you're putting matter in different places inside the nucleus and energy can be emitting that way without spitting out mass. So you can spit out mass. That's one way of doing it. You can just spit out energy or you can do both. So nuclear chemistry is the study of nuclear reactions and the uses of those reactions. So we can produce power. We can destroy whole cities. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do with this, in, with this understanding. So let's uh, define some terms first. If you remember that inside the nucleus there are um, protons, and protons are the positive, this is a positive um, subatomic particle, and then neutrons are a neutral. And both of those are found in the nucleus of the atom. So the nucleus contains the positive protons and the neutral neutrons. Together, since they're in the nucleus, they're both considered nucleons. And they, and they have about the same mass, okay? Uh, so a proton and a neutron are nearly identical in how much they actually weigh. So a nucleon can be either a proton or a neutron. So the atomic mass of, a, of an atom, okay, which is here, the mass number, is going to be the protons plus the neutrons, uh, and it doesn't matter which since they're about the same weight. So it's just the, the combination of protons and neutrons. The lower number, the one in the lower left corner, is your atomic number, and this is the number of protons only. So if you have the number of protons, six, and you have the number of protons plus neutrons, 12, you can easily subtract those two and find the number of neutrons. You take the mass number, divide by the, or subtract the atomic number, and you end up with the number of neutrons. If you change the atomic number, okay, so you change this bottom number, you change the element. So carbon, for instance, is only carbon when there's six protons. If there's any other number than six, it's no longer carbon, it's something else. But you can change the number of neutrons. You can make carbon heavier or lighter by changing the number of neutrons. So as the mass number goes up, that's called an isotope. Okay, an isotope is um, iso meaning the same. Tope. Okay, so you have an iso. It's the same number of protons, but the different differing number of neutrons. So it's different forms of the same element. A radioisotope is a radioactive form of an element. Okay, so it's radio because it's radioactive, an isotope because it's a form of, say, carbon. Okay, so here's some examples. You have uranium-234, which that's the mass number. You just say uranium plus the mass number, uranium-234. That's telling you that you have 92 protons, and then 234 minus 92 will give you the number of neutrons, and then the number of neutrons differs in these different numbers, in these different isotopes. All of the ones in uranium, uh, for instance, are radioactive. So all of these are radioisotopes. We're going to see that the um, at the very bottom of the periodic table, the very highest numbers, almost all of them are radioactive. They're so unstable because they've got such a huge number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and they just can't get comfortable. There's just too many in the box. It's like shoving too many crayons in your box. So it's the same thing here. And they are always trying to shift uh, their location to try to make themselves fit better. And because they do this, you're going to end up with energy that's going to be emitted. And so this is these are radioisotopes. And you've got lots of different types of isotopes of the different elements that 
you could have radioactivity. So even the, the smaller elements, there are some forms. So say carbon-12, okay, carbon-12 uh, is a normal form of carbon. Carbon-13 is a normal form of carbon. So you can shove those 12 protons and neutrons together in the nucleus, and they're fine. 13 fits pretty okay. 14 is a little uncomfortable, and they're always shifting around, and as they shift, they're, they're starting to break down. And so carbon-14 would be a radionuclide, okay? It's a unstable or radioactive form of an element, okay? So you can have lots and lots of elements in the periodic table. Uh, if you can pick one that that's just can't get comfortable the nu in the nucleus, you'll end up with a radioisotope. Okay, here are the various forms uh, for, for you to learn. Hope you can get this. First one is alpha decay. Um, an alpha particle, that's a Greek letter alpha, okay, it's like a letter A, um, is going to lose not just energy, but it's also going to lose matter. So, for instance, uranium, this is uranium-238, that's how you would name it, um, is so unstable that it breaks apart, okay? And it's always going to break apart four, um, four, four atomic, um, four nucleons at a time, okay? So, Here's the atom helium. There's two protons and four atomic ma four of the ma the mass number is four. That means it's protons and neutrons added together is four. So if you were to take four minus two, you would end up with two neutrons. So in the helium atom, you've got two protons and two neutrons. Well, uranium two thirty eight is always breaking apart and it's falling apart as it's breaking apart. It's not just energy that's that's being sent out. There's matter falling off of this stuff. It's actually shooting out of it like a gun. So uranium-238 is going to readjust itself to uranium-234, okay, uranium-234, uh, because it's, it's dropping two protons and it's dropping two electrons, okay? So as it drops two neutrons, it'll go from 238 to 234, Okay, here's the other four that was in the 238 originally. And then as it drops from the protons, it'll drop from uranium-92 uh, to uranium-90. Well, uranium-90 doesn't make sense because it stops being uranium when it stops being 92 protons. So 90 protons is actually thorium. So uranium will break apart as a helium uh, nucleus plus thorium. So I should actually scribble this out and write this as TH, thorium. That's alpha decay, where it's actually losing kind of a helium nucleus at a time. Okay, now watch this. Beta decay is loss of an electron. So a beta, a beta beam, a beta radiation, is not sending out helium nucleus, nuclei, but sending out instead very high energy electrons. Okay, it's a beam of electrons. All right, now see, I want you to see this math. Um, by the way, whenever you do an equation, a radio uh, or a nuclear equation, all of the, uh, the um, neutrons will all equal zero, okay, or all equal each other, both sides will equal, and all of the protons will also equal each other. So if you ha start with iodine-131, okay, and you send out a high particle energy electron, well, that electron has to come from somewhere. And it's not going to turn into an ion, okay? So it's not going to lose it and become a positive ion. What's happening is you're actually kind of converting, um, you're kind of converting neutrons into protons. So what's gonna happen, you've got neutrons which stay the same, but the protons, Okay, you have 53 on this side, and you're sending out a negative. An electron is actually a neg almost like a negative one, and you'll end up with a going to the next element. So this would be a, a xenon 54. You may have actually heard of electrons, I hope. You've heard of um, maybe even alpha and beta particles, beta waves and alpha waves, maybe gamma wave rays we'll talk about in a minute. Here's one that you may not have heard of. This is a positron. 
and a positron is almost like a backwards electron. So electron is negative, okay, it has a negative, it's, it has almost no weight, but it has a negative charge. This one is the, the opposite. It has almost no weight, okay, so we'll say that that's zero in, in, in mass, but it has a positive charge here. So if you have something like carbon-11 that sends out a positron beam, okay, the only way that to do this is to make sure that everything adds up. So it's you've got zero here, so it's not going to affect this number, so your mass number stays 11. But in order to have a 1 here, and it equals 6 on the other side, carbon has to be turned into boron. So you're actually losing a proton. A proton, okay, is being changed probably into a neutron and the neutron into something else that's being spit out. So you, you actually change from one element to another. So you can change elements to another in nuclear radiation all the time. One element changes into another atom, element. Gamma radiation doesn't lose mass, okay, because there's no mass here in a gamma beam. Um, and there's also no, um, no protons. There's no charges. So this is not anything at all. There's no matter that's being spit out. This is only electromagnetic energy. So gamma rays are very, very, very high energy. In fact, gamma rays are used to treat cancer. Uh, it changes, it mutates the cells. All kinds of stuff happens if you're exposed to radiation. Radiation poisoning or radiation, you can, you know, a, a bomb with a nuclear warhead could kill lots of people. And this is one way it would happen. It's serious energy. Okay, it, could, it levels whole cities. So it's the loss of a gamma ray, which is high energy radiation that's almost always accompanies other particles. So when an alpha particle comes out, when the helium comes off, gamma rays are also going to come out. If a beta particle comes off, which is the electron, it's also going to send out gamma rays. Even if a positron uh, comes out, you're, uh, you're going to end up with gamma. So gamma is the energy that spits out along with the change in mass. And gamma doesn't have any mass change of its own. The weirdest one, and the one that was most surprising to me, is an electron capture. Electron capture is that as this thing is falling apart, it's so unstable, stuff is just happening, happening, and all of this is trying to um, change in order to, to correct for all this stuff going nuts. One of the things that uh, radioactive materials can do is capture their own electrons. So the electrons are buzzing around, not in the nucleus, but outside the nucleus. And if some electro uh, electrons can actually be sucked into the nucleus, okay, kind of like fall into the nucleus because it's negative and the nucleus is uh, usually positive and that electron can actually fall into it and uh, change things. So what's actually happening um, in this case is you're turning a proton into a neutron. So you have a proton in the, in the you know, one or many protons in the nucleus, so it has a, it has a, a one charge, uh, a one charge, it's just a positive, protons just look like that, and uh, an electron that's getting sucked in from the outer shell that's getting sucked into the nucleus, and when they add together, you have zero, well a zero is neutral, okay, there's no, no charge, no positive or negative, and the one plus zero adds up to one, so this is essentially turning a proton into a neutron. Wacky, wacky, wacky.